Did you know that over a million Americans are dying annually of just heart disease and cancer alone? Do our doctors know the cause? Join us for the next 30 minutes of eye-opening science. Hi there, my name's Dr. Greg Emerson. I'm a physician from Brisbane, Australia. I first met Doug a few years ago and my life's never been the same again. It's an honour and a pleasure to be on his show and welcome to Know the Cause. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you for being with us. Dr. Greg Emerson, all the way from Brisbane, Australia. By the way, he's going to be in town here in Dallas soon, and we're going to do some retaping with him. Wonderful, wonderful doctor. By the way, Kyle Drew joins me today. Hey, Doug. Good to see you, Kyle. <laughs> nice to see you. Look at us in sweaters. Look at you know, this. It's cold what outside. is this? I uh, know. Kyle and I are going to be discussing a whole lot of things. Really, uh, this is going to be a me and Kyle show. So you're watching a show that's really going to be uninterrupted. Yeah, the misconceptions about of the whole phase one diet one thing. and the whole fungus thing. Yeah. We need to discuss that. There's a that. lot of those. We also need to discuss a couple of the questions we had here oh. today. Inflammation and arthritis. Oh. Did you see this one? Yep, yep. Can fungus be passed to the unborn? That's a big Good. One. You guys are smart. That's interesting. And then, of course, we're going to be discussing Kyle's problem with low J. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> In the opening of the show, we're going to be discussing it's low, low J. Think. It's not low T. It's low J. All that and more on today's Know the Cause. So we introduced in the opening of the show something called low J, and we said that Kyle has it. I don't have it. No, no, you have it. Believe me, we all have it. We'll explain what that is in a few minutes. It has to do with juicing, right? All the minerals, vitamins, protein, not protein, but all the good stuff in juicing, <laughs> enzymes especially. Before we do, folks, so many new viewers, so many new networks have joined us. Thank you all. Welcome to the show. I am just your humbled host. Uh, Kyle joined me 10, 12 yep. years ago. He was a pharmaceutical sales rep for the biggest pharmaceutical company, and he was selling chemotherapy drugs. Boy, did I pull him out of that. <laughs> and we got together. <laughs> he read some of the scientific data that has been published about fungus, and here we are today. Here's what we know. I'm going to let Kyle talk about, because he's so well-versed in supplements and medicines and pharmacology and so forth, let me talk a few minutes about what this phase one diet is. Then I want Kyle to talk about natural versus pharmaceutical antifungal drugs, which I think is a good idea for those of you who think you may have an internal or external fungal condition, both diet and some supplements that might wipe it out. The diet was born out of our understanding that fungus, like worms, parasitize man. Little tiny microscopic things. And the more I studied this 40 years ago in mycology, the study of fungus, the more I realized that these little tiny fungi aren't the harmless big worms you see in your body. They emit a poison. Of the couple million mm. species, a million and a half yeah. species, I think they say are out there, fungus, we found a couple hundred now that are pathogenic in man. So 200 of these fungi can cause jock itch, can cause the things way beyond uh, you know, ringworm and so forth, and things doctors don't yet know. Things I think, like diabetes and some tumors, are actually caused by this fungus. So the diet was one that was built out of necessity. How can I eat to starve this fungal parasite? Fungus hates eggs. It hates nuts. It hates grass-fed meat. But it loves grains and sugar and potato chips and hot bread and beer. Okay? <laughs> so the diet, everything I wasn't eating <laughs> back when I was 21, 22 years old, I was sick. Everything that I was eating, beer and cookies and potato chips and so forth, were all the foods feeding the fungus. And it got a stronghold in me and I got sick. So I developed a diet, today we call it the phase one diet, that annihilates fungus by starving it. Some people just need the phase one diet for a period of time, maybe a month, before they feel so much better. But some people need to talk to their doctor about either an antifungal drug or antifungal supplements. Yeah, you know, when we talk about antifungal supplements versus antifungal drugs, I always think of supplements first because I always think natural first. Yep. And so you're talking about things like caprylic acid, you're talking about oregano oil, olive leaf extract, coconut oil, 
cat's claw, pouty arco, blah, 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 blah. If we sped me up huh, and I talked for... Ti- that's the thing that was interesting to me about the first time that you came on the radio show with me in Oklahoma City. And here was Doug, sort of my hero. I had watched him on TV from afar, and he comes on my radio show. I forget my name. I can't talk. And then I asked him... <laughs> Uh, about the health food center, I said, how many antifungals do you think are in this gigantic 27,000 square foot health store? And he said, thousands. And I thought he was going to say like a dozen. (laughs) And I said, what are you even talking about? And he said, "Uh, vitamin C is antifungal. Vitamin A is antifungal. If it is a natural nutrient that has survived. The germination process has grown up through the ground. There are antifungal components to it. And if it works, there's an antifungal component to it. I thought, that's weird. So how right? antifungal is juicing? Oh, yeah. It, 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 I want to show people something. Oh, don't this show is this. your drink. Yeah. Look at all of those antifungals <laughs> on the left. <laughs> I mean, even the lemon in the back, okay. the oil in that lemon. So you've got the kale, you've got the parsley, you've got Swiss chard, spinach, celery, cucumber, purple Brussels sprouts, broccoli. This little guy right here, that's turmeric. Oh, yeah. It's turmeric oh, root. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. lemon and apple. Uh, throw that in, and you've got this at the end of it. And I'm telling you, this is magic. I would never eat this whole thing probably in a day. But I, I can get it all if I juice it, makes it easy, get it all in. How many antifungals are in this? It's not one, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's thousands. It's thousands of them. Right? And we say antioxidants. Every time I see that word, I change the <laughs> oxidants and I put fungal. If it has oxidative value, it has antifungal value. Now, don't go away because Kyle and I are going to talk a whole bunch more on this and other topics on Know the Cause. I have been beating this drum for 40 years. The avocados aren't bad. The walnuts aren't bad. Here to help you with your health issues today is Frank Jordan, bringing you the NSC Minute. There is a magic bullet for good health, but it's not a new drug or antibiotic. It's your own body and your personal immune system with 20 trillion immune cells created by your maker. The Great Physician made 20% of your 100 trillion cells immune cells to protect you from pathogens such as fungus seeking to damage your health. Stop just minimizing and patching symptoms after they make you miserable. Instead, determine and know the cause of your issue. Then help your body's immune cells recognize and attack the cause to kill and dispose of what seeks to harm you, preferably before you get sick. Know your magic health bullets are your body's immune cells, waiting now to be nutritionally activated by NSC Immunition Glucan or NSC 100 Extra Strength Glucan. Remember, when you can't, Immunition Beta Glue can. Here we are on the set of DDT, Doug's Daily Take. We decided to do this here to encourage you to join me every day. What you see on TV and what you can see every time, every day at your time avails uh, on DDT are two quite different things. I can unload a little better on DDT on the internet. Here, I have to be subdued. So I'm going to read you this headline, and that's my take. Uh, Men with prostate cancer should eat healthy vegetable fats, says a study. Let me tell you why I'm enamored by this. I have been beating this drum for 40 years that avocados aren't bad, that walnuts aren't bad. Uh, And yet I remember decades ago, nutritionists saying, no, all fat is building up plaque in your arteries and amyloid plaque in your brain. And that makes you sick and that causes heart attacks. Folks, we are on a mission to get fat out of people's body. What are statin drugs? You know, lower your triglycerides and cholesterol artificially. In this study, it was really good. Finally, doctors are starting to think diet. It was really good. It said, look, instead of a ham sandwich, one of them actually says this, instead of a ham sandwich, eat a half a ham sandwich. It says, instead of a potato, have an avocado. They're starting to think the right way, starting. Now, you give these guys with prostate disease a drug called Nizoral that kills fungus also and get them on our phase one diet because it does say peanuts okay here, and I don't think it is. And you're going to see some real changes, real progress made in a disease called prostate cancer. But then I'm Doug Kaufman, and that's just my take. Welcome to DDT. 
That's My Take is brought to you by NSC Immunition Products. Let your better tomorrow begin today with Immunition Products. You know what I've loved through the years? Assisting people in getting better. There have been thousands of them I've been able to do that with. And now it's your opportunity. I'm teaching you, then you help them. What better way and what a better gift during the holiday season than the cookbook, Eating Your Way to Good Health and Cooking Your Way to Good Health. A holiday special, we'll put them both on sale. Why wait until January 2nd to start helping yourself and your loved ones get better? Why not start today? Many years ago, while growing up in the nutrient-rich green countryside of Japan, Dr. Ohira had the genesis for the idea that would become the fermentation process for one of Japan's best probiotics when traveling in Malaysia. Dr. Ohira concluded it must be the fermented foods they ate that contained these beneficial probiotic bacteria that contributed to their good digestion and enhanced immune health. Dr. Ohira's probiotics are the ultimate in probiotic supplementation. Feel the Dr. Ohira difference. What do you think? Know This is now in magazine format. It turns pages just like that. It's that simple. Now, mom doesn't have a computer. She wanted to get Know This. Make her a copy and send it off to her. A new recipe every month, the same great articles you're always used to, and then sponsor and our own sales on Know This. Simply go to our website, knowthecause.com, click on sign up free. It's yours, we send it to you. Then you can disseminate it anywhere you want. It's that simple. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, America's Pharmacist. We all love grapefruits, but did you know their seeds have health benefits too? Makers sell supplements of grapefruit seed extract. It's also called GSE for short. It's basically concentrated grapefruit seeds, a little pulp, and some of the white pith of the grapefruit. If you take GSE, you can't help but notice the bitter taste. It's much stronger than an actual grapefruit. But that bitterness is the secret to some surprising health benefits. I'd personally just pucker up because I think GSE is good for you. It acts like an antibiotic as well as an antifungal. And you can take it by mouth or you can apply it to your skin for fungal infections. It seems to reduce the risk of colon cancer too. But I'd be real careful because grapefruits, grapefruit juice, and GSE supplements all interact with dozens of drugs, including a common blood thinner called warfarin. So check this out and ask your doctor if eating grapefruits or taking GSE supplements is okay for you. I'll see you next time. Are you enjoying it so far? We thought we'd go back to the beginning on this Know the Cause, and maybe you're making a tape of this, and you can always go back and check your data here. Kyle talked a little bit about supplementation and foods being antifungal. Is it no wonder the American cancer, American heart, American lung, American nose, everybody has a <laughs> diet that prevents these diseases, and they're all the foods you saw because he had low J. He didn't juice enough, but now he is juicing enough, and he's getting all of these great uh, positive oxidants, uh, antioxidants in his body, and they're antifungal also. Yep. You talked about the supplements, and you named quite a few of them. Yep but not the medications. Tell us a little bit about when medications are needed. <laughs> and, uh, Back to med I, I left that industry. No, no, sometimes you're gonna have to have medications. Thank mm. goodness they're there. It's the overuse of medications I've always been concerned about. Yes, you've got Diflucan. Yes, you've got Nystatin. You have Lamisil. You have a number of great antifungal prescription medications and wow the incredible studies that have come out on these lately showing its relationship between the antifungals and anti-cancer and anti-diabetes it's incredible mm. so if if that's part of it but please so many people sometimes nowadays they will take these prescription antifungals thinking that these are the big boys these are the strong ones and they will do it to the exclusion of the diet exactly and yeah. they'll take all of this medication yeah. prescription and they won't do the diet and i'm telling you number one talk about misconceptions we'll talk about yeah. the misconceptions of the phase one here's one of them one misconception is it's the prescription antifungals that are the most powerful and these cutesy little juice things are the least powerful i think it's just flipped the other way around. I think it's the juicing and the natural antifungals that are the big boys. Sometimes you need uh, prescription medications for various reasons, but there's also the misconception that you can take a, a handful of supplements yeah. or pills to the exclusion of the diet 
and it'll still have the same effects. It will not. The diet comes first, much to my chagrin, by the way. I was a supplement guy. I thought that I could get away with only doing that, not changing my diet. It's diet first. Some of the misconceptions of the phase one diet, boy, I have heard it all. Number one, is this a low calorie diet? Oh, yeah. You know, is, is this like these ads I see on TV where people lose 800 pounds, you know, by following a micro, <laughs> micro, eating micro? Um, it, it's nothing ceases to amaze me in That's America right. anymore. Um, so you bring up some of the great misconceptions in your talk. I'll tell you, one of the things that people say is they will write us letters and we've almost put them on but it, it's almost going to sound like we're making fun of people and that's not what we're doing but sometimes people will say listen I'm on the phase one diet and I'm getting no results whatsoever maybe we'll call them write them back or something turns out they'll say yeah uh, I started the phase one diet last week uh, well that's number one it takes one week before anything mm -hmm. starts to affect listen stay on the phase one diet for a period of time Make sure that you're you're Say giving it enough time. Give it a give minimum it a month. of a month. Give it yeah. a couple of months. Give it your the rest of your life. Believe me, that's what I'm doing. But Kyle, and things they're work saying well. but I introduced walnuts, or I ate two eggs, and I'm on the phase one diet, and then I had pasta for dinner. Right. They'll say I had cereal, but I also included a phase one food like eggs with it. I had pasta, but I also included broccoli with it. Therefore, I'm on the phase one diet. No, no. The phase one diet is just the phase one diet, only the phase one foods for a period of time. Kyle, let me back up a little bit. Forty years ago when I got into this field and I began yeah. to see that fungi were parasites yeah. and that grains were feeding them, the biggest misconception then, which it still is today, if it weren't for these great doctors all writing these books on grains and how bad they are, the biggest misconception is, Doug, you're going to kill people by taking them off grains. And then, what, 20 years later, we had whole grain. <laughs> what in the world were we eating before? Half grains? It's so amazing, the marketing that is done, folks. And I may eat some grain from time to time, but I know if I feel miserable the next day, it's linked back to these mycotoxins that commonly grow in our sugar and our grain supply in America today. One other misconception. No, this is not the Atkins diet. That's a big misconception. This can be as high protein or as low protein as you want. It actually can have a lot of carbs. You saw the picture of my juice. That is a lot of carbohydrates, but it's the antifungal version of carbohydrates that we emphasize with this diet. Another quick misconception. You're going to feel great from day one. As a matter of fact, you'll probably feel <laughs> miserable from day one as these little fungi burst and emit these poisons that we'll talk about when we get back from this break. You know, many years ago, a friend of mine up north in the U.S. asked me if I would begin writing a column in her newspaper. I did so, and we've memorialized five years of that in a book called The Fungus Link to Health Problems. Not only do we have the phase one, phase two diets, but also a fungal quotient. How do I know if my symptoms are linked to fungus? This book will probably help you. Get the diet, get the fungal quotient, get five years of information in the book, The Fungus Link to Health Problems. <coughs> do you sometimes feel like your life is surrounded by germs? Ah. <coughs> Seagate's all-natural remedies can help protect you and your family and relieve these irritations. Ask for Seagate in your local health food store or call toll-free and learn more about all of the products coming from Seagate's organic farming and fishing operations. Keep the cameras rolling, keep them in suspense. This is delicious. There they are, and of course, through the magic of television, what would be crackers if we didn't have something good to put on them? Phase one good. And, and the one in the cookbook is made with stevia, which is mm -hmm. a substitute for sugar and makes it phase one friendly. That is just, that is better than good. This is a little bit different. Denny's come up with a phase okay. one type of stuffing. Exactly. Thing. And welcome back. I promised you that I'd talk a little bit about some of these fungal proteins, etc. <laughs> fungi make these pathogenic couple hundred species of fungi make poisonous substances. We know, everybody knows, thanks to Bill Crook and many other books, 
about candida albicans, right? Vaginal yeast and, you know, thrush in the mouth and so forth. But we don't know about the couple hundred other species, mm -hmm. you know, the Fusarium, the Aspergillus, the Penicillium, all these long-named molds that make poisons. It is not so much the fungus, although that can impregnate you and cause problems, it's the poison it makes once it's rooted inside your body. And remember, fungus grows in a sac. They're called ascomycete fungi. They grow in a sac, just like, almost unidentifiable from a cancer tumor. I gotta say something, I'm sorry, yeah. but no. there are so many people who are starting to key in on Doug's plan, Doug's research over the years, and I just have to say something because he's not gonna say it. There are people who get kind of the outer ring of yeah. this fungus message right by getting the candida thing right. That was Bill Crook, and thank goodness for him, and a lot of these early pioneers. Some people are starting to see that even a few more fungi, nobody has put it all together with the diet that also has a link to some of the grains and yes. other foods yep. that are impregnated with these mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are almost never talked about in any other book. This is the most comprehensive approach to dealing with health and dealing with the fungus link to whatever that is out there. And this is why I call it the Kaufman diet. Yeah. He still wants to call it the phase one diet. I call it the Kaufman diet. He kind yeah. of pushes that aside because he yeah, doesn't I want mean, to attach his name to it. But I'm telling you, this is what makes it special. He links all of these things together. So one misconception, by the way, is, oh, you're talking about candida. Well, I don't have candida. Well, big deal. There's a hundred other more that you may have. I love Denise's question yeah. here. Can fungus be passed to an unborn child? As surely as fungus disseminates or metastasizes through the blood, hundreds if not thousands of scientific articles. How does this stuff get from the lungs to the bladder? It disseminates via the bloodstream. To that end, mother and child are united. Can fungus be passed to an unborn child? Folks, one of my concerns today is this wasn't done 50 years ago. It seems all pregnant women are given mycotoxins to take during the third trimester, months seven, eight, and nine. What, in the, what are the mycotoxins? They're called antibiotics. Mm. Somebody scraped off the cervix some bacteria, and all of a sudden, this mother is gonna die of a bacterial problem or pass it to her child. Worse, I think, she's gonna pass mycotoxins to her child. So yes, Which fungus, are genotoxic, thank and you. that could create DNA. Yeah, they, and they say there's a DNA problem, but what caused the DNA problem? Thank you, yeah. Kyle, that's so important. A child is born with a genetic disorder. Why? Mycotoxins are known to break genetic strands. Amen. Now, let's go to this one. Uh, where does the inflammation, Kyle, this is so good. Thank you, Doris. Where does that swelling come? What makes bread swell? There it is. Oh, uh, that's an actual question. Uh, we, the whole show is about fungus. Guess what the answer is? We talk about this a lot. No, th this is a great question because it's, it's, it's so new for so many people to think, okay, what's causing inflammation? It's what Doug just said, what makes bread rise? Could it be the cause of why you're rising right here or right here or right here? It's the same thing. Show me a, an arthritis specialist that knows this, folks. All he wants to do and all you want is relief of pain, mm. so you don't ask the right questions. Why am I swelling? Don't go away, we've got a quiz for you in the wrap up of today's Know the Cause. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, arthritis in my left hip. I had a lot of pain in my leg. Well, they put me on a real heavy medication at an arthritis doctor. There's a natural solution, Flexin. I would have tinges of pain in my hips and my knees. <laughs> Had a lot of pain in my leg. Gone, completely gone. I just love Flexin. Flexin has just made me feel super. Flexin will have you feeling better in no time. Call today. That's 1-800-END-PAIN. <laughs> Thanks in part to Know the Cause, doctors are finally understanding that there is a food disease link. Cooking the right food makes all the difference in the world. Now the right diet is memorialized in a book called Cooking Your Way to Good Health. Fungi are parasites, they need to eat. Starve them and they'll begin dying. Along with antifungals, eating right is very important. Now you can eat right by reading Cooking Your Way to Good Health. It's a recipe book. 
Well, my son, who is now 22 years old, soon to be 23, was diagnosed with bone cancer just two years ago. He had to have 16 months of chemo, radiation, and surgery. And about, I'd say, like six months into his um, therapy, I found Doug Kaufman and his website. We learned how to eat properly and what supplements to take. And we've taken our whole families on the NSC24 beta glucans, probiotics. It's just done an amazing wonder through our bodies. We all have just suffered so much. I think it's probably because of our environment that we live in and the foods we eat, of course. And just going through this journey and learning about what Doug has imparted to us as believers and also being a Christian, I just am so in love with what he's doing. And you know, my family's sick of hearing about fungus and they think I'm a little psycho, you know, but that's okay. But my son, um, quit, his last chemo was December 22nd of 2009. He's just doing phenomenally well, and the bone cancer that he had is a really rare form, and only 60% of the, the patients survives. I think building up the immune system, especially with the beta-glucans and the probiotics and everything, has really helped him get through. He didn't suffer as many side effects as all the other patients did, and he just breezed right through everything. And he is just, he's doing so great right now. And the cool thing for me is that my kids are now learning how to eat properly, and they're really taking this and understanding it. My mom always says, you shouldn't eat corn, peanuts, all that good stuff, you know, and get rid of it, the yeast in your bodies. And I'm just so grateful. I just wanted to tell people how much I appreciate Doug and and what he's doing for all of us, especially in the cancer world. So. Well, it comes from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much for allowing us in your home. I know we have a lot of sponsors I love. Do you know we have sponsors 10 years plus know. on Know the Cause? Gosh. You talk about big time, Frank Jordan, the Seagate Company, I mean, uh, Michael Shore and you know, it, everything, all of our sponsors, we love them. But we decided today to bring you some of the common threads that, you know, what is it about this diet? What are antifungals? Do I need to go to my doctor and ask for an statin? And I hope we've answered those today. This is kind of a long one, so let's start here. Kyle, if you can read that, because I can't see that. All part. right, so what does Dr. Elias Anisi say about blood testing for the fungus aspergillus in his book, Clinical Mycology, A, that all patients with cancer should be tested for aspergillus. Yes. B, all patients with recurring sinus infections should be tested for aspergillus. Yes. C, patients with positive blood tests for aspergillus typically have unusually low blood temperature. Yes. Or D, aspergillus usually eludes detection because blood cultures performed on infect patients almost always test negative for this fungus. Isn't that sad? Sort of yes for everything. And look at what the answer is. The actual blood answer test, is D. A doctor who knows fungus will take blood and run it. And, and that's another way. misconception. What are the blood tests that I can use to yeah. know that I have aspergillus or any other fungus? Past exposure is proven on blood tests, not current symptoms. Kyle, you thank got, you. Hey, it's nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you folks for joining us today. Tell a friend about Know the Cause. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>